Here's how I can get anyone to open their wallet and hand me 20 grand. And it's not by using some secret formula. It's a step-by-step -step plan that I created over two whole years of failing and winning that will literally apply to anything. I'm talking finding clients for your SMMA agency to drop shipping toothpicks to simply running a personal brand and even monetizing it. The issue that you're probably facing like I did two years ago when I started is I was fighting an invisible enemy and you are as well. Like many of you, I was once battling an enemy that I couldn't even see, sending endless emails, DMs, but getting nothing in return. So I want you to uncover those enemies in this video and then follow my step-by-step -step process to actually beat the devil of business, which is, simply put, a lack of clients. Now, the first big issue that every entrepreneur has starting out is simply trust. Think of it this way. You wouldn't want to get married to a person you just met, and like marriage, business is a relationship or a partnership, one that's built on the back of trust. If people don't trust you, the chance they'll even respond to your message is next to zero, never mind actually go ahead and give you money. So step number one is to create and maintain trust in three separate things. The first is in you yourself, as it's about an 85 to 15% split of people investing into you as opposed to investing into your product or service. Now, the second thing is your offer, whether that's your product or some sort of service that you're running like ads for a business or even managing their content. Whatever that offer may be, it needs to radiate trust and stability for potential prospects or no one is giving you their money. The third thing is trusting your ability to fulfill the offer. Now, how are people meant to know that you can actually carry out your promise without seeing it in action because let's be honest here words are useless it's only actions that matter in the end well this is how you address all three issues the first issue of trust is in you as an individual that can be solved by doing exactly what i did and what i'm doing right now as i record this video which is building a personal brand if i didn't have all these followers and videos giving me that social proof people definitely wouldn't be sending me their money to help them scale their digital businesses because they wouldn't believe that i'd even been able to scale mine because where are my credentials without my following. Humans are sheep and when they see a herd, they trust the shepherd being flocked to. The exact same idea applies to the issue of trusting your offer. People are just more likely to believe in your product or your service when they see reviews and testimonials from people out there saying that they love it. But let's be honest, many of you right now watching this are at ground zero and you can't even get a single review, so how do we fix that issue? Well, number one, well, you can't be charging prices worthy of 100 five-star reviews when you have none at all. Now, the second thing is not a lack of you sending out I love your work and will work with you for free emails to 100 people you don't even know. It's a lack of actually showcasing the value that you can add and provide to your potential clients and banking on their pity rather than actually being obsessed with your work and giving them the best service and evidence of that service that you can. But make sure that truly sunk in. You have to rely solely on your value, not on someone else's pity to hire you because you're just starting out or constantly begging them to. So you might ask, if begging and offering free work doesn't cut out, then what's the real game changer? How do you offer value to prospects? Well, it's simple. You create content. This is something I do inside the Growth Syndicate with my mentees to figure out what they want to sell and how they want to make money. And there will be a fair few with businesses already based on managing YouTube channels for people in contact. One of the guys me and my team have helped is called Hansel. Now, Hansel runs a content management agency and he had the exact same client problem that you're currently seeing right now. He was stuck at $500 a month in revenue and after a few tweaks in less than a single month, we 12X that to $6,000 a month. One of those massively important tweaks was making content surrounding the offer. So in this case, what he started to do was post strategies that he had used to improve engagement across a client's content or something as simple as a before and after edit of his current clients and that had a huge impact on the number of leads Hansel was actually getting. He can not only go out of his way to DM people and start conversations with them now but he's been getting a ton of inbound leads as well and he's now getting potential prospects booking calls with him left right and center and you're probably wondering it's definitely a lot easier with a content agency and a lot more difficult with other kinds of businesses right well actually that's where you're playing and simply wrong we've worked with countless other people for weeks on end one guy called hazer joined us and within two weeks he sold a 2100 euro package for website design all marketed through organic content. Literally, all he had to do to get this client 
content was to make a little bit of content revealing and exposing his experience and his expertise to his potential clients. So say you've done that, you've now got trust, but why is finding clients still so insanely difficult? Well, the next sales killer is a two-part problem. And I've worked with multiple businesses in the last two years and the ones that I stayed with the longest all had one thing in common. Now, what was that one thing? Well, they all put themselves in my shoes. Rather than just seeing me as a cash cow they were gonna milk for the longest time possible and get as much value out of me, they instead tried to figure out what it was that would hold me back from accepting their offer going into the future and all of the good ones came to the exact same conclusion. There was always an element of risk. Now, if any of you watch Dragon's Den or Shark Tank, you'll notice that investors demand their stake based on how risky the business is and will even bow out altogether if it's too risky. But how do you actually go out to determine risk though? Well, it's a combination of factors, including prior sales, reviews, referrals, the ability to contact well-known figures and ask them what their experience was like as well. These are all factors that play into that risk. And if you don't have them present or not to a large degree, well, that dictates how much you can charge and if someone will buy from you even at all. Now, I'll give you a quick example. A video editing agency I was working with had issues acquiring clients and so I suggested that they simply start offering free trial edits just a simple minute of editing with that prospect's raw footage making it into a killer product. Funnily enough they increased their sales by three times over because they had fulfillment on lock and their editing was actually solid but before they were struggling to even get through the gates and explain to people and show them how good their content was. The main reason they saw their sales rise by so much was because they removed that element of risk on that buyer's end. The buyer got to see for real what their potential video was going to look like free of charge and at zero risk to their wallet or time. As soon as something like that happens it instantly removes a layer of friction between you and the prospect and that's ultimately one of the hardest hurdles and that actually ties into another one this particular business was facing and you're probably facing too and that was perceived value. What do people think of your offer? Do they think it's worth the money or do they see it as a ripoff that they'd never even consider pay for or worse as a money drain or a cost on their business? These were questions running through the prospect's mind and all it takes is one seed of doubt to prevent them from paying you. So how do you actually come to overcome this insane challenge? Well, at the Growth Syndicate, we call it offer reframing, where you essentially take your offer as it is, you look at your ICP or your ideal customer profile, and from their point of view, you think. What about this would actually make me buy the product? What promise or feature or framing would make me click buy and send two grand all the way up to 20 grand within an instant? So we reframe that editor's offer. And rather than simply calling it the best video editing in the industry, we said video editing crafted to maintain high retention and generate more revenue you for you. If you notice what we did there, we added in two separate features that every YouTuber or business person actually wants from their content. That's a high retention rate and more money. At the end of the day, if your video editing services aren't providing your client with better retention or more money, it's going to be incredibly difficult to sell them. Now, after doing that, the editor has been getting into talks with multiple five-figure client retainer deals. So say your offer is to run ads. Rather than saying, we will manage your TikTok and Facebook ads for your business, you frame it around the why. Why do people want you to run their ads for them? Well, the answer to that is simple. They want a return on their ad spend or an ROAS, and they don't want to deal with the hassle of managing the ads and learning how to get that themselves. So instead, you say, we'll manage your ads on autopilot for you, and the only thing you track is the four times ROAS we get you. Now, many people, including yourself, will think that I'm saying straight up exaggerate or lie in the sentence or two that describes your offer, but that couldn't be further from the truth. I know people who have actually lied about their offer and given guarantees that they simply can't fulfill and all it resulted in was them having to give all the money that they made back a couple months later. You can only make statements that your personal brand and your reviews support. If you can prove a four times row as through your past clients, then brilliant. But if you can't, then overstating or lying about that will only come to bring you to ruin in the long term. And whilst it's great reframing your offer, how do you actually make people want it? Well, that's probably what's going through your head right now. But actually, that's the wrong thing to be thinking. It's the wrong lens to be looking at this problem from. 
you need to change the way they see the things that they actually want. Now I'll give you an example. Say you're a student at university and you want a laptop to make life easier for you. You want to be taking notes, maybe watching YouTube videos or your lectures rather than having to actually travel to the library to do everything you do. You want to get this new laptop out of convenience, but you could get by without it just fine. Now you walk into an electronics store and the salesperson asks what you're looking to buy. And after talking for some time, you went from wanting a normal laptop like an HP or a Dell to a MacBook Pro. And now you're being convinced that your want is actually a need. You need this laptop to succeed in school. You need this laptop to study on the go. If you don't have this laptop, there will be serious repercussions and consequences for you and your life. You probably don't even study on the go at the moment, yet this person has convinced you that you do and you need this laptop to satisfy that need. The key here though, is that you wanted it at least a little bit at first, so the emotion and the excitement is there, you just had to have it redirected. And the person, the salesperson, had to convince you that your decision is purely logical, when in reality, it's emotional. You have been convinced that if you don't make this purpose, you will actively lose out on something, maybe an opportunity, maybe some more money, maybe just the chance to get better grades at school or university, or even the ability to build an asset like a personal brand or a business online. It could be anything, frankly, but you have to combine the emotions of excitement with FOMO wrapped in a blanket of logic. Now, so far, where are we? We've created an atmosphere of trust around you and your offer and your ability to fulfill that offer. The client is facing this sense of urgency and they need your product, which has a high level of perceived value. And there's even a risk-free guarantee because you give them a free trial period to test you out first, and again, this is of course all covered in the Growth Syndicate or the Growth Formula where we talk face to face, sit down twice a week and build you a plan, help you optimize everything to make you at least three grand a month within three months. Now we've addressed many problems here, but there are still some huge issues that we simply haven't spoken about. One of which is of course comparison. Some wise man once said that comparison is the thief of joy. Well, in this case, it is a thief, but it's not of joy. It's the thief stealing clients away from you. Now, at the end of the day, business people will always compare you to your competitors and you can do everything you can to stop that from happening, but they will still do it nonetheless. And the biggest factor that they will compare you with is your price. Are you cheaper or more expensive than John down the road doing the exact same thing as you? If you allow it to get to that point and you're beaten on price, clients will hammer you for it and that's enough of a reason for them to want to leave you and go elsewhere that's doing the exact same thing or close enough but at a far cheaper rate. Now something I learned from Alex Hormozzi is something that really changes this altogether. It's the example of a commodity. If your offer is solely built around the tangible features like maybe the edit of a video or the return on ad spend and that can be replicated, you are nothing more than a commodity. That means you're playing a loser's game because the only thing you can compete on is price because your fulfillment and the product or service that you're supplying is identical to everyone else's. And in that example, you will lose because there will always be someone out there willing to take less money to take your client from you. So you have to move away from being a commodity. You have to instead become a rare asset. You're no longer a gold bar. You're a rare one of a kind diamond that no one else in the world will ever be able to access without paying you for it. But how do you actually do that? Well, it's actually pretty simple. The minute, the second you hear the objection of price, you hit all of their pain points with questions like, respectfully, why are we even speaking about this then? Why me and why not the guy charging 20% less than me? And you'll usually get an answer that consists with one of two things. They may be gravitated towards you and your persona and your personal brand. Essentially, you look like you know your stuff. Well, the second thing is you have a track record. Your reviews were better than the competitors your prospect is comparing you to. And again, it really comes down to you know your stuff. In either one of those cases, it's no longer a game of comparing your product or your service. It's a game of comparing you as an individual and the unique advantage that you bring to your clients. And that is something that cannot be replicated easily and that's when the conversation shifts away from price and towards value and results, which means as long as you have full utmost confidence in your abilities as an individual, as an agency, as a business to provide the service or product that you are claiming to provide, this will never actually be a tough close for you. The real issue comes with personalizing the entire process for these leads. 
from the email or the DM that you send out to the free value that you provide to the pain points that you actually hit upon to get your clients. All of this has got to feel as personable as possible because there's a reason cold emails are ignored, right? It's not that people don't like the format or that they never actually check their emails. It's that people crave human connection and interaction with real people. And there's instantly that connection built when a prospect feels seen and heard. But mass cold emails are never going to achieve that unless they're hyper personalized. Your clients aren't just paying for your service, they're paying for the experience of working with you. And how do you build that personable experience and that human connection? Now, of course, we've addressed many problems, but there are still some huge issues which we haven't spoken about. And sadly, we just can't cover everything in this short YouTube video here right now. But there is a solution because I'm running a free class this Thursday for anyone who wants to attend to learn how to build an info agency, the exact same business model that I currently run and use to make all of the wealth that I now have. All you have to do to join that free class is click the link down below in the description and I'll see you there live on Thursday where I can explain everything in far more detail to you over a 45 minute free live class.